Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Hundreds march to Tunisian parliament as protests intensify. Delhi police detains around 200 people after farmers led tractor rally. Biden administration to restore diplomatic and aid relations with Palestine. French workers stage protests against government policies. Hundreds marched to the Tunisian parliament on January 26 as protests against worsening economic conditions and police brutality continued across the country. Protests first began after the announcement of a renewed lockdown starting January 14th. Police forces have deployed tear gas, water cannons and other forms of force to suppress the protests. As of January 20th, human rights groups estimated that over 1,600 people, including 600 children, had been arrested. However, these numbers have continued to grow. Several injuries were also reported yesterday as police forces deployed excessive violence to prevent protesters from reaching the parliament. Here is People's Dispatch reporter Abdul Rahman to discuss the context of the protest. The basic reason behind the protest is uh, the economic problems the people in Tunisia are facing. Uh, when I say economic problems, primarily meaning the increasing unemployment and rising poverty among the people, which has been intensified, particularly because of the outbreak of the COVID. Tunisia is a very uh, service-based economy, which basically a, a large segment of uh, its uh, employment comes from tourism, uh, uh, which is basically badly affected by uh, the outbreak of the COVID and because of the lockdown imposed since then. Uh, well, also, uh, Tunisia, Tunisian economy is, is also basically is suffering because of the various other reasons, structural reasons. One of the reasons is the mismanagement, what the Tunisian masses primarily call corruption. Overall, the situation is last year itself, uh, according to the different estimates given by different other uh, different international organizations, Tunisian economy has contracted almost 9% which is the largest contraction since Tunisia's independence. The state in Tunisia has been trying to prevent the protest. As I said, the protests are ongoing in Tunisia for almost a decade. Uh, and they have always used strong, brutal measures to stop the protesters. Uh, in one of the, uh, in the recent uh, round of protests, the police used tear gas and latticha uh, and other things to basically stop uh, the protesters. In one of those protests, one of the protesters was uh, injured. He died a uh, day before yesterday, which led to the call, which basically say one of the reasons for the call for yesterday's march was the death of this particular protester. The parliament, Tunisian parliament, was discussing the proposal given by Prime Minister Hashim uh, Mechisi. Mechisi, they know, uh, he has proposed a mm, a new cabinet, uh, and uh, the, the parliament was discussing the new cabinet. The protesters basically are demanding a systematic change in Tunisia, and therefore uh, uh, they marched to parliament, not only in opposition to what was proposed in the parliament as an ad hoc uh, uh, attempt to basically pacify the protesters, but also to uh, uh, mark a statement that uh, such uh, small uh, ad hoc measures will not be sufficient. Around 200 people have been detained by the Delhi police today in connection to the tractor rally held by farmers on January 26. Police have issued charges of rioting, damage to public property and attacking of police personnel and have registered 22 first information reports. Police complaints have been filed against 10 farmer leaders so far. The Indian government has also deployed additional security forces including paramilitaries in the national capital today. Tens of thousands of farmers led a historic tractor rally in the capital yesterday as the country celebrated its 72nd Republic Day. The rally had been organized by the Sangyuk Kisan Morcha, which is a coalition of farmers' organizations staging a sit-in at the Delhi border since November 2020. Following 11 rounds of failed negotiations, the farmers had announced the tractor rally and gotten official permissions from the police and the government. The rally was supposed to commence from three different points in the city and follow a pre-approved route. Reports of violence came in when police forces began to attack a section of farmers that had deviated from the approved route. Police officers deployed tear gas and baton charges against the protesters. A protester was also killed in the ensuing violence and commotion. 
Stray incidents of violence by individual protesters were also reported, which were immediately denounced by the Farmers' Coalition. The coalition also issued a formal statement condemning the violence, but reiterated that the protests at the border would continue. The administration of US President Joe Biden has announced plans to reopen diplomatic missions and resume financial and humanitarian aid to Palestine. President Biden has also reiterated his support for a two-state solution for a secure Israel alongside a viable Palestinian state. These measures were announced by acting U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Richard Mills in front of the U.N. Security Council on January 26. Mills further stated that the United States would maintain its steadfast support for Israel and promote the normalization of relations between Israel and other countries. The U.S. will maintain its policy of opposing unilateral actions, including the annexation of territory, demolitions and settlements. It will also oppose resolutions in international bodies that, quote, unfairly single out Israel. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has also stated that the Biden administration will not move the embassy, U.S. embassy, back to Tel Aviv. Former President Trump had shifted the embassy to Jerusalem in 2017 in a move that violated international law and went against the international consensus. Other Trump-era measures, including the recognition of Israeli sovereignty over the occupied Golan Heights in Syria and Israel's claims over Jerusalem as its undivided capital, remain as yet unaddressed. This announcement was issued on the same day as news broke of Israeli military forces fatally shooting a 17-year-old Palestinian boy. Atallah Rayan was killed outside the illegal Israeli settlement of Ariel in the occupied West Bank. The Israeli military claimed that Rayan had attempted to stab military officers and was subsequently shot. However, as reported by Al Jazeera, footage of the incident released by the military only shows the back of the officer supposedly under attack. No other videos of the incident have been circulated as of yet. The killing of Rayan is the latest in a series of fatal shootings of Palestinians by the Israeli military. According to rights group Betzalem, Israeli forces killed at least 27 Palestinians including seven minors across the occupied Palestinian territories and within Israel in 2020. For our final story, we take a look at a strike by various sectors of the French working class on January 26. La ministre Madame Gouron a annoncé la décentralisation des infirmières de l'éducation nationale. Donc du coup, ça impliquerait qu'on ne serait plus au sein des établissements scolaires et que tous ces jeunes en situation de détresse, de mal-être, etc., ne pourront plus consulter gratuitement, librement, au sein des, des établissements scolaires une infirmière. That's all the time we have for today. For more such stories and videos, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.